Let us now learn about Bohr's model of an atom. We have already learnt that Rutherford had come out with the nuclear model. In Rutherford's nuclear model for the atom, the all the positive charge was at the center in a very small space which we call the nucleus. Right? This has most of the mass of the atom and the electron roams around in a circular orbit very very far away. In Rutherford's model, the electron orbit could be of any size. Basically, the radius could be anything that the electron wanted. It could be at this radius, it could be slightly smaller, it could be slightly larger. And because the electron is revolving around in a circular orbit, it has an acceleration, centripetal acceleration. A charged particle with an acceleration, according to Maxwell's theory, must radiate. So that means, as the electron orbits like this, it is going to continuously radiate and as it radiates out energy, it will lose energy and it will collapse into the nucleus. Basically, as the electron moves around like this, as it radiates, it is going to spiral into the nucleus, which then means that atoms must quickly collapse. But what do experiments show us? They show us that atoms are stable. They don't collapse like this. And atoms do emit radiation, but not continuously, only occasionally. If the electron were to spiral in like this, that means it must continuously emit radiation. But that is not what experiments show us. Atoms only emit radiation occasionally. And one more thing, this kind of spiraling in will mean that the radiation that comes out will have to be continuous at all wavelengths. But actually atomic radiations, they turn out to have discrete wavelengths. They only emit, atoms only emit radiation at specific wavelengths. It is not continuous. So discrete wavelengths. So obviously, the experimental evidence contradicts Rutherford's model. So for a few years, scientists were very confused about how to resolve this contradiction. Because Rutherford's alpha scattering experiments definitely showed that there was this central nucleus and the electrons had to be quite far away. But the model obviously violated what was experimentally observed. So this confusion was finally resolved by Niels Bohr when he came out with his postulates. Niels Bohr came out with a set of very important postulates that resolved the confusion in the atomic model. Okay? So let us look at Bohr's postulates. The first postulate that Bohr made was only some orbits are allowed. There are certain orbits that are allowed all other orbits are not allowed. Think about Rutherford's model. In Rutherford's model, the electron could revolve at any radius. So, all orbits are allowed. But Bohr is saying, no, 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 no. That is not possible. There are certain orbits, certain radii that are allowed. Other radii, other orbits are not allowed. Only orbits with specific radii and specific energies, they are allowed. All other orbits are not allowed. The bigger the radius, more will be the energy of the electron in that orbit. Okay? But the most important point I want you to keep in mind here, the difference between Rutherford's model and Bohr's postulate is that only certain orbits are allowed. We will later come back to figure out which orbits are allowed and which orbits are not allowed. But at this point, I want you to keep this in mind that Rutherford is saying any orbit is okay. Bohr is saying no, 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 only certain orbits are allowed. Now, what is so special about these certain orbits? Ah, in these allowed orbits, electrons do not radiate. There is no radiation that the electron does, right? When it is going around in that orbit, it does not radiate energy. And this explains why it does not collapse. So, this explains why atoms are stable. Because if they don't radiate, they will not have to spiral in, right? So, when the electron is roaming around in these allowed orbits, it does not radiate. Wait a minute. When it is going around in this orbit, it will have a centripetal acceleration. It is a charged particle. So, according to electromagnetic theory, it must radiate. What Bohr is saying here is that atomic physics is different. Okay, there is something different about what is happening inside the atom. He did not obviously know what was so different about inside the atom, but experimental evidence is showing that something is very different. So, Bohr is saying it is okay. The electron does 
violate electromagnetic wave theory. So, Maxwell's theory is being violated by the electron inside the atom. And so, when it is in these allowed orbits, it does not radiate. Okay? This was a very important departure from what was earlier thought of in classical physics. He is coming up with a new statement saying that the physics that we are used to for large scale objects, it does not work inside the atom. This was the first time somebody had figured out that atomic physics is going to be something very different from what we were used to. Okay? So, he is saying that electromagnetic wave theory which works brilliantly for large scale objects does not work inside the atom. And inside the atom, in these allowed orbits when the electron roams around, it does not radiate. But atoms do emit radiation. You can't say there is no radiation at all. Atoms do emit radiation. But in the allowed orbits, there is no radiation. So, when will they radiate? Ah, atoms will radiate only when the electron jumps from one orbit to another orbit. So, when they jump between orbits, then there is radiation. But when they are in the allowed orbit, so they are only in that orbit, then there is no radiation. That is the big difference. And the energy of the photon that comes out will be equal to the energy difference between these two allowed orbits. So, electron is roaming around in one allowed orbit and when it jumps to another orbit, there is an energy difference and that energy difference is what comes out as the radiation energy, the photon energy. So, this also brilliantly explains why atoms radiate at discrete wavelengths because there are discrete orbits. So, that means they must have discrete energies and so atoms will radiate at discrete wavelengths. So, Bohr's postulates suddenly gave a lot of clarity to scientists because it was able to then describe atoms with a new model. So, this new model very different from what Rutherford had presented but still using the fact that it is a nuclear model was able to then explain a lot of the observed experimental facts.